naming ionic compounds. First, you have to identify that this is an ionic compound. Anytime you have a metal and some nonmetals, you're going to have an ionic compound. The one thing, there are some ionic compounds that don't have a metal. And so what you have to watch out for is anything that starts with NH4. This is the ammonium ion. It's a polyatomic cation. Okay, most of the cations that we're going to see in this class are going to be metals. And so that's why if it's got a metal in it, it's an ionic compound. But if it has NH4 in it, it's also an ionic compound. Um, you can categorize ionic compounds into two groups um, by the type of metal. Okay, so there are some metals that only form one kind of ion, and there are some that form more than one. And so I'm mentioning this because your book goes through it this way. I really think this is a little silly to talk about this type 1 and type 2, but there it is. Um, we already talked about the metals that form one ion. These are group 1A. They all form plus one ions. Group 2A form plus two ions. Group 3A form plus three ions. And then there's zinc and silver. So here is aluminum. Aluminum is in group 3A. Zinc is right here. So this is plus 3. And if I come down a step, this is plus 2. And silver is down here. And that's down one more step. And that's plus 1. Three, two, one. Pardon me? Do we know why they have charges that way? We do know why they have charges that way, and I'll explain that to you in a later lecture. So, group 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, and silver. The names for these ions are the same as their element name. So, Zn2 plus is the zinc ion. Zn is zinc atom. So that's easy. Here are the nonmetals, and I don't know why they left off these guys. Here's nitrogen and phosphorus. So these nonmetals form predictable ions as well, and they are named by taking their element name and changing the ending to ide. I think I'm probably getting ahead of myself. Oh, I forgot about that. I actually had an animation in here. There's a little triangle in there. There's the triangle. So aluminum, zinc, and silver. There's zinc and silver. Here's a list of them. Um, I think the periodic table is more useful, but there they are. All of these only form one kind of ion. They always have the same charge. Then there's all the other metals. All the other metals could form different charged ions. And there's not a good way to predict which one it is from the periodic table. And so we have to indicate in the name of the compound or the name of the ion what the charge is. So we use Roman numerals. So this Roman numeral business is for all the metals that are not in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver. So if it's in group 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver, no Roman numeral. If it is not in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver, do you have that down yet? Groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver. It's kind of catchy. We should make a song, right? 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc or silver. Then you need a Roman numeral. So the example here is iron. Is iron in group 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc or silver? No, it's not. That means that iron can form ions with different charges. Iron forms a plus 2 ion and a plus 3 ion. And the reason for that is known, but it's beyond the scope of what we're talking about right now. It is not 42. But I'm sure it could be tied to that in some way. So this ion, we can't just say iron ion, because we wouldn't know which one we're talking about. So we use Roman numerals. So this is iron 2 ion. That means it has a plus 2 charge. 
And this is iron three ion because it's got a three plus charge. Okay. So here are some of the other metals. These are ones that we're likely to run into. Um, chromium also makes plus two and plus three. So the plus two ion is called chromium two. The plus three ion is called chromium three. There is an older system of naming. And so you might come across these sometimes. I will not put them on exams, but they, you could come across them in a homework assignment or a lab or something. Um, so if you see an us or ick ending, just go look it up. I can't even remember which ones they are. The us is the lower charge and the ick is the higher charge. This um, system with the Roman numerals is much nicer. Um, so a lot of them have charges of two or three, but not all. Copper can be plus one or plus two. Tin can be two or four, but it, it's not found as three very much. Okay, so the Roman numeral tells us what the charge is. Here's what I kind of got ahead of myself on. The monatomic anions. So these are just the single element, not the polyatomic guys. You take the element's name and you change the ending of it to ide. So remember I said that I think of metals as being masculine and nonmetals as being feminine. So you could, you could kind of say, well, when a metal and a nonmetal get together to form a compound, it's a little bit like they're getting married, right? And so traditionally, who changes their name? The woman. So it kind of follows into this as well. The non-metal changes the ending of her name. So fluorine, when it becomes part of a compound, changes its name to fluoride. Chlorine becomes chloride, okay? And the charges are predictable from the periodic table. There are ionic compounds that have more than two kinds of ions. We are not going to deal with any of those in this class. So for our purposes, ionic compounds, two ions, a positive ion and a negative ion. And so when we name these, we name the positive ion first and the negative ion second. It's like the, the wedding invitation, Mr. and Mrs. We, just, we do it the same because it's, it's easier if we're consistent. So the cation's the first element, usually. It'll be a metal. The one exception is when you have this ammonium ion. And then the anion is going to be everything else. Because there are those monatomic ions, but there's also polyatomic ions. So let's look at these, these ones right here. Let's name this compound KBr. And, you know, you might want to call him Kevin or something, but we need to come up with the systematic name. So KBr, We're, we've only talked about ionic compounds, so it's a pretty good guess that this is ionic, but learn to check. K is potassium. Is it a metal? Yeah, so this is ionic. So what we're going to do is we're going to name the element that's first. Okay, so we've got, we had two elements here. We've got K and we've got Br. Is, is K in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? Yeah, it's in group 1A. So it doesn't need a Roman numeral. Its name is potassium. We don't need to put a Roman numeral because it always is plus 1, and we know that from the periodic table. Br is bromine. When bromine becomes part of a compound, she changes the ending of her name. So this is potassium bromide. OK? Two bros. Most, most compounds have two words in their names, just like most people have two words in their names. But then there are some exceptions, like Mary Ann Jones is three names, right? Share is one name. So water is like share, right? It's just a single word. Okay, let's do this one. ZN3, N2. So first of all, let's say, well, zinc, is that a metal? Yeah, it is. So this is an ionic compound. So I'm going to have two ions. I'm going to cut these in half. The first one is zinc, 
and the second one is nitrogen. So I've got zinc. Is, in, is zinc in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? Yeah, it's zinc, right? So it's in zinc. Does it need a Roman numeral? No, it doesn't. So I just write zinc, and then nitrogen becomes nitride. So zinc, nitride. Now what do I do about those numbers? Nothing. I don't have to do anything about those numbers. Because from this name, zinc nitride, if I had to write the formula, I would know that zinc has a 2 plus charge because that's one of those things you have to memorize. And nitride has a 3 minus because of its position on the periodic table. I would look at those numbers, I would crisscross them, and I would get this formula. We don't have to do anything with the numbers because the charges tell us what to do. Now, for those squirrely metals that form more than one ion, we sometimes need to, we need to know how to figure out what charge they have. And so that's done by looking at the chemical formula we can figure out the charge on the anion, and from that, we can figure out what the charge on the cation is. So let's look at this example, Fe2O3. So if we're trying to name this, well, no, that's not what we're trying to do. We're just looking for the charge. Okay, so let's, let's try to think about this. So we've got two irons. I'm just going to draw things out here. We've got two irons, and we've got three oxygen ions. Is iron in group 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? No. That means we don't just know what the charge is. Okay, so now we need to look at the anion. What's the charge on an oxide? It's 2 minus, right? Each of them is 2 minus. So what's the total negative charge? Negative 6. The total positive charge has to be equal to that. I need a total positive charge of plus 6. There are two positive ions, and they're going to split the charge equally because atoms are fair. They're going to split the charge. What are they each going to be? 3. So these guys must be 3 plus. This is not hard math. It's just math applied in what may seem to you a very strange and random type of way, okay? Keep at it, keep asking me questions, and you'll get it. And then you'll say, oh, I see it now, it's easy. So let's name these compounds. PBO. Well, lead is a metal, so this is an ionic compound. The first element is lead. Is lead in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? No. It needs a Roman numeral. I don't know what that Roman numeral is yet, but I'm going to put the parentheses there, and I'm going to come back to it. And then, so if I, I should be consistent here. There's two elements, there's two ions, so I've got PB, and then I've got O, and what's the name for oxygen as an ion? oxide, and the, the charge is 2 minus. So to find the charge on the lead ion, I have to look at the charge on the oxide ion. Not sure I like this new stylus. So I have one PB, and I have one O2 minus. So what's the charge on the lead? It must be 2 plus. So this is the lead 2 ion. It's got a plus 2 charge, so I put the Roman numeral 2 in the parentheses. Any questions? Pardon me? Um, well, that would be lead rust. Yeah. On the previous one, the Fe203, that's what we think of as rust. A lot of metals will oxidize. Um, Cu2S. 
Well, is, is Cu a metal? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Cu is copper. We've got these two here, Cu and S. Is copper in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? It, it's not in those groups, so it needs a Roman numeral. Don't know what it is yet? I'm going to skip that for now. S for sulfur, what does that become? Sulfide. Okay, so I got those names in. I need the Roman numeral. Now I need to look at the charges and the numbers of each atom. So there are, there's two copper ions and there's one sulfide ion. What's the charge on the sulfide ion? Negative two. Because of its position on the periodic table. So I have a total of minus two charge. That means I have a total of plus two charge. Because the charges all have to add up to zero. So I've got plus two split between two ions. They each get one. So this is copper one sulfide. Any questions? Most of the polyatomic ions that we see are actually um, oxy anions. Oxy anions meaning anions that contain oxygen. And there are some patterns in here that can help you um, know the formulas and uh, names of more of these than just the ones I made you memorize. So I, me I told you to memorize ones that ends in, end in eight, sulfate, phosphate, carbonate, those guys. Then there's a pattern. You can figure out what nitrite is because it's related to nitrate. So nitrate is NO3 minus. You memorize that. Nitrite has one less oxygen. So we change that ending. You change the ending eight to it. It's a little bit like Bud Light. It's the light version, right? What's the difference between Bud and Bud Light? Bud Light has a third fewer calories, right? The light version, the ite, has one less oxygen. The charge, thank goodness, is the same. It's just the number of oxygens that change. So you memorize nitrate. You can figure out nitrite. You just subtract one oxygen. Here's sulfate. Sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. The 8 does not tell us that it's 3 oxygens or 4 oxygens or whatever. You have to memorize that because it's different for different ones. You memorize that sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. Then sulfite is the light version. It has one less oxygen. So sulfite is SO3, 2 minus. So here's, here's the series. Um, there are these families. So here's chlorate. You memorize that one. Chlorite has one less oxygen. And then there's this one, ClO minus. It has even one fewer than the light version. So we put the prefix hypo in front of it. Hypo is a prefix that means below. Hypodermic needle, you. Does it give you the creeps? Below the dermis, below your skin. A hypodermic needle goes below your skin. A hypochlorite has one less oxygen than the light version of chlorate. Okay? And then you can also have one more oxygen than this one that you memorize. So this is, this is the row that you memorize, the eights. And one more oxygen is per chlorate. The way I think of this is hyperactive, right? A hyperactive person is more active. So per means more. Per chlorate has more oxygen, chlorite has less, and hypochlorite has even less. Now, chlorine makes the chlorate ion. I did not tell you to memorize bromate and iodate. But bromine and iodine are in the same family as chlorine on the periodic table. I think of them as being like sisters. So they share some common characteristics. They form exactly the same types of ions. There's a pattern here. 
So bromate is also the O3 with a minus one charge. So if you memorize chlorate and the pattern, you can write the formulas and names for 12 ions just from knowing chlorate is ClO3 minus. Um, here's a note about mastering chemistry. It may ask you to name ions. And when you name an ion, it wants you to indicate the word ion. So if you just write perchlorate, it's going to say you're wrong. You have to say perchlorate ion. It's so picky, right? So I won't do that on an exam. Um, I, won't, I won't do that on the worksheet that we're going to do in lab, but I'm just warning you about mastering chemistry. Mastering chemistry likes you to type the word ion. There are lots of polyatomic ions um, in your kitchen, in your body. Um, sodium hypochlorite, that's the active ingredient in household bleach. So hypochlorite. Chlorite has one less oxygen than chlorate, and hypo has one less than chlorite. So sodium hypochlorite is NaClO. Sodium bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is also a polyatomic ion. Um, calcium carbonate. That's uh, the active ingredient in Tums and Alkamins, and you can take that to uh, neutralize stomach acid. Um, sodium nitrite. You may have heard, oh, we shouldn't be eating nitrites. Don't eat uh, preserved bologna or whatever. Um, so nitrites can be bad for you, but um, botulism is also bad for you. <laughs> um, so if you're eating um, meats that don't have, you know, prepared meats that don't have nitrites in them, you, you have to be a lot more careful because you could get really, really sick. Okay, so let's name some compounds containing polyatomic ions. So here we have one, MnNO2,2. This is like deciphering some strange code. So the first element is manganese. Manganese is a metal. This is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds, two ions. So I'm going to draw a line after that first element. Because what some students want to do is they want to make this into three ions, and they get very creative. Uh, this is not a good place to be creative. We just need to follow the rules here. There are other places that you can be creative. Two, just two. So the first element is manganese. Is manganese in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver? It's not. So it needs a Roman numeral. I don't know what that is yet. I'll come back to it. Now, I need a name for everything else. Don't split it up. This one has parentheses. We're just looking at what's inside the parentheses. So NO2, that's nitrite, right? Because I made you memorize nitrate, NO3. This is one less. This is nitrite. So I'm going to write nitrite. Now I can go back and figure out what the charge on the manganese is. So nitrite is NO2. It has the same charge as nitrate, minus 1. And the parentheses with the 2 on the outside tell me I have two of those. And I have one manganese ion. So my total negative charge is negative 2. That tells me my total positive charge must be plus 2. There's only one I on there, so it's going to have both of those charges. So this is manganese 2 ion. OK? How about this one? Well, the first element is cobalt. Cobalt's a metal, but it's not in groups 1A, 2A, 3A, zinc, or silver. So we need parentheses to save space, to remind us to come back and put that Roman numeral in there. Two elements, I'm sorry, two ions, three elements. 
There's the cobalt, and there's everything else. What's the name of the CO3? Carbonate. Carbonate. Okay, so now that I have those, I can figure out charges. Carbonate is CO3. What's the charge? So negative 4 is a good guess. It's negative 2. And then I've got one cobalt. I just have one of each here. So if the carbonate's minus 2, the cobalt must be plus 2. So this is cobalt 2 carbonate. Questions? When you write cobalt, make sure that the, the O is, is small so it doesn't look like carbon monoxide.